to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. We'll raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. We will raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. Sing in honor of you. For who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle, Amen. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, the Lord mighty in battle. Amen, 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 amen. You're prophesying over your life tonight. Amen to the healings. Amen to the miracles. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. To my new season. Amen, 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 amen. Father, give me an encounter tonight. Please lift your voice and pray. Give me an encounter by your spirit. Give me an encounter even by your spirit. An encounter that will turn my life around. following online pray all the overflows pray the king of glory is in this place the healer the lifter the way maker restorer few more seconds Bless his name and express your expectation. I have come. Shabarako Saprande Gebalako Shadekateba Lakata Brende Gebalanyata. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. For in Jesus' name we pray. For in Jesus' name we pray. Father. Do wonders in our midst tonight and let Jesus be glorified we have come full of expectations we pray that none of us will return back the same way in Jesus name we pray 
Welcome to our miracle service for the month of August. May God bless you. In Jesus' name, please be seated. Please help those under the anointing. I want to welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. Your life will never be the same. Believe it, it's true. Your life will never be the same. And for those who are coming here for the first time, welcome. You will not need to tell people you came here. What will follow you when you leave will be a testament that you met the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me appreciate everyone we have in our midst. Um, very wonderful man of God and his dear wife. We're really honored having both of them together. Apostle Goodhart and his dear wife, Pastor Bimbo. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma. We truly appreciate you. Hallelujah. For everyone who has come, you're a man of God here. You're welcome. All our international guests, may God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I have an assignment today to make sure you do not go back the way you came. In the name of Jesus Christ. I have an assignment that that sickness will not go back with you. That challenge will not go back with you. And for the door that has refused to open, we are breaking it, not opening it. We will break that door in the name of Jesus Christ. So that you and your children and your children's children will pass. This is the assignment of the power of God to insist that your life looks like what the word has said. Are we together? Listen carefully. If the word of God has not gone forth, the power of God does not have an assignment. The assignment of the power of God is to bring authenticity and validation experientially to the word of God. That means the power of God depends on what God is saying to walk. Are we together now? If God says be healed, then you can be sure every sickness is in trouble because the power of God now is released towards that direction. If God says be lifted, then the power of God, God's power cannot do what God does not say. As powerful as the power of God is, it depends on what God has said and it moves towards the direction of his word. So for you to know where God's power is, you have to find out where his word is. Are we together? The Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 3, it says, there is the hiding place of his power. If God says prosper, then his power comes your direction. If he says prosper, then the word of God insists that all that needs to be in place, the power of God will on legal and legitimate grounds, make sure you do not remain there. That means for every word and every declaration you are going to be hearing, whether it comes as a prophetic word or it comes as the teaching of the word, listen carefully. What you should know is that it is not just sound that is coming to you. Every time the word of God comes, know that the power of God is behind it coming too. So for instance, if I say tonight is your last night in this, in this realm of captivity, that word now may be an ordinary word if spoken by a man unassisted by the word. That is just empty talk. But if that talk is backed up by the word of God, then you can be sure that behind that speaking, there is the power of God. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, two scriptures and we get to the business of the night. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them all. He says with great power. The apostles did not just come to announce the resurrection of Jesus with empty talk. It takes power to bear witness to the fact that Jesus is alive. Are we together now? Yes. 
Remember when Jesus rose up from the dead, there were all kinds of contentions to stop that news, the validity of it from being accepted. People use money, people use relationships, they use connections to bury that truth that he rose again. So when you come to announce that Jesus is alive, the implication is that everything that he died for has gone for good. Are we together now? Being alive means he had defeated sin, Satan, hell, and the grave, and that he rose again triumphantly. But if you announce and say he's alive, just as a mere discussion, it does not bring any profit to the listeners. The Bible says with great power. It takes great power to announce and to validate that Jesus is alive. Because if you say he's alive, the sickness in someone's body is saying it's not true. I am not yet sure. That healing becomes the validation that he's alive. Are we together now? That open door. You have heard me say it many times that the devil uses infirmities. He uses negative situations on men as a canvas to indict the integrity of God. So when an individual comes with sickness, comes with, you know, retrogression and all kinds of things, it is more than just conditions. There are statements that the devil is making through that man to God. That you are unable to lift, you are unable to bless, you are unable to open doors. When God heals, when he delivers, when he opens doors like he's already doing, it is more than a miracle. It is a reply from God to Satan through man, I am still alive. So for every miracle you will experience tonight, and every testimony you are going to have, it's important for you to know that more than the material expression of it, God is using your life to send a very strong message that I'm still seated on the throne. If you believe that, say amen. Yeah. Mm. With great power, the apostles gave witness of the resurrection. So for instance, if a woman came here who has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb and everything that has been done has defied any medical attention and God gives you triplets, there are more than three children. It's a testament. I can restore time. I can restore the years. Are we together now? May that be your testimony. Yeah. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. We'll read from verse 11 and 12. Acts chapter 19. The Bible says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Verse 12. Then we'll go back to 11. So that from his body were brought unto the sick, handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Back to 11. The first thing we need to understand here is that God is able to wrought all kinds of miracles, even special miracles. The miracles are categorized in different, uh, you know, different categories even the bible acknowledges that there are a kind of spectacular spiritual occurrences called special miracles and that is the same god that means there is no situation that should dampen your faith and make you feel god cannot do this one god can do this are we together every miracle is already a wonder but there are special miracles but the Bible says that he did this by the hands of Paul. When I meditated upon this scripture, my mind went to the hands of Paul. Watch this. It was God that wrought the miracles, but he needed the hands of a man. God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. The Bible says, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Who brought them? The Lord. But he needed that human vessel. God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. These are all the factors that need to be in place for genuine miracles to happen. Number one, the God of the heavens, who is the one who gives the miracle, has to be there. Number two, the vessel, and he must be yielded enough to allow God move through him as he wills. That means if certain miracles are limited and they do not happen, it's not a reflection of God's, look up please, it's not a reflection of God's inability. Are we together now? 
the bible already tells us that this god is able to wrought all kinds of miracles including special miracles that means if that dimension of special miracles does not reach the saints it is not the problem is not from god's angle it is a problem with the kind of hands that were used that means it is not only God who should prepare for miracle service. The vessel that you will use also, you must enlarge capacity to be able to host everything God is releasing. Are we together now? God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. The Bible says, so that verse 12 now, from his body were taking handkerchiefs. Please give it to us again, media. From his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons now watch what the bible calls special miracles <laughs> number one the diseases departed do you know what a disease is a disease is not sickness is anything that brings a structural deformation to your life first your body any kind of deformation everything that breaks the pattern the sequence of how things should be first in your body and then your life is called a disease poverty is a disease are we together now yes all kinds of failure come under the, that that word disease the bible says the diseases departed it is a special miracle when with surgical precision the lord separates you from that which inconveniences your life he says the diseases departed from them number two the evil spirits went out of them the conditions that the bible calls diseases departed from them that means true deliverance is not just the exiting of spirits it is also the exiting of conditions spirits can leave but if the conditions remain you are not at ease you are not at liberty conditions can leave not only spirits are we together now look at the testimony of the gentleman the pastor very very humbling eight years as a legal practitioner staying under an uncompleted ah, the power of god bah. i pray tonight that your faith will come alive god god listen ladies and gentlemen god is too serious to gather you together and waste your time no not the god of the bible one word released by the power of god collides with your destiny and things begin to shift i can tell you by the privilege of god's grace and with all humility that this god who works miracles in is in our midst and by the privilege of God's grace, the hands that he will use is also here. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the faith that connects that God and the hands is also here. That means all things are ready. All things are ready. I'm prophesying to you again. Inside, outside, all things are ready. In the mighty name of Jesus, all things are ready. I believe in miracles. Ah, I do. I really believe in miracles. I believe that God can change a man's story. I believe that God can wipe the tears of a family. Hear me. I believe that someone can come for a service and sit like this. And while you are here, God is not only here, but he's where you are going to be after here. Correcting and arranging things for you. That's what it means to be a way maker. I believe. I really mean what I'm saying. This is not just some man of God preaching. I truly believe it. That God is able to bring people into prepared blessings. Prepared blessings means that he makes a table. And I'm speaking this by the spirit of God. Prepared blessings. Listen, there are times where God can empower your farm for your crops to grow. But there are times he can send bread from heaven because of the urgency of what is needed. All those miracles is still the hand of God. I believe God can correct body parts. I believe he can give new ones. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I believe God can open the book of remembrance. Is it not in your Bible that there is such a book? 
he said bring me the chronicles and he said ah this guy did this many of you have been part of the lives of many people and yet you have, you have it is human to forget but when god is ready to lift you was it not what happened to the wine presser he said i remember my wrong this day i forgot somebody who was not supposed to be in the prison like you are here now and god is reminding someone remember i said by january and god is reminding them how about someone who is missing returning home read your bible donkeys return home talk of human beings donkeys god is that meticulous to return a donkey talk less a human being if god can return donkeys he can return money that is missing he can return things that have left i believe in miracles i believe in miracles i believe in the supernatural i believe it when it defies science when it defies time it is the doing of god hallelujah and i believe in impartation let me tell you what impartation is impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities we are made among many things by the kind and the quality of the graces that reside upon us it's true your possibilities are defined by the kind of grace that is upon you that means if there are certain things that don't seem to happen it does not mean they cannot happen it means the grace that commands them is not yet there you can know what is on you by what is around you thou anointest my head with oil but i know it by the overflowing of my cup it means if my cup is empty it does not mean all cups are empty it is just my own that is empty challenges are not generic they depend on what grace is at work in your life because for some of you this is what you really need you love god sincerely but there are certain possibilities that you are unable to command because there is, there is a kind of anointing and there is a kind of grace that needs to come upon you they saw saul and said is saul also one of the prophets and for some of you you came here to meet jesus to be saved because you see no matter what else you get if it is minus jesus you are already holding a loss in your hand it does not matter what it is minus jesus it is a loss and for some of you god brought you here you are not really his focus for now it is that spirit that is behind what you are doing are we together that spirit that will not let you rest not let you rise no increase everything going down the god that we serve is a mighty god are we together now let me assure you by the grace of god that every spirit that is masquerading behind your pain and every problem i stand by the god of heaven who called me and i declare it must give up on you finally it must give up on you finally it must give up on you finally tying down your children tying down your progress it works for others until it gets to your turn listen when it's time to pray don't be quiet are we together you didn't come to watch a movie you came to provoke some things to get out of your life they remain to the degree to which you permit them there is a way you can be angry at certain situations and say lord thank you for the grace to clap for others but tonight i have made up my mind tonight it has to be my night tonight is also a night where whoever has been sitting on what belongs to you mashali kasko prakato zatia pakada embregete kalakusiata hear me was a man not sitting on a seat that belonged to Mordecai. He sat for a long time. It was not Haman's destiny. The real person who was the owner was sitting at the gate and, a, and someone who was there mismanaging that position. Tonight, God will overturn and overturn and overturn and overturn. I prophesy to you, he will overturn. Hallelujah. The Bible says, while men slept, the enemy came. 
Many of you have seen harvests in your life. You cannot remember who sowed the seed. The Bible says you were not the only farmer. There were things you sowed and so, eh, the devil came as a farmer too and added some things. You sowed peace and love, but you are seeing a harvest of trouble. And you are saying, no, 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 this does not match. Ah, he said when a thief is caught, he is made to restore tenfold. In the name of Jesus. Help those under the anointing. Listen, I came here full of the spirit. I came here angry in my spirit because it, it is someone's season by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Who told you God does not lift? Who told you God cannot lift a man? It doesn't matter what family you are coming from. Forget about the talk of arrogant men. When God points his hand at you, he can shift anything and lift you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And any man who by mistake has said over his dead body, this night, this ground will open and swallow them. Who is a man that attempts to speak when God has not spoken? Any family here that there doesn't seem to be joy, it seems like sadness and pain. Every week, every month is another episode of trouble. You are hearing trouble from mama, trouble from your dad. In the name of Jesus, I don't care how long those patterns are. They let you go once and for all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, you'll be seated shortly. When the, the, la the lady who works in civil defense... As she was giving her testimony she said something that struck my spirit she said my promotion came and it was backdated and that thing touched me you see the difference between progress and restoration is that in restoration you backdate project progress is just advancement but restoration we have to start not where you are where you were and then take you to where you need to be both progress and restoration, my God will release it to your life tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I believe in the power of God. I believe in miracles. Don't ask how it will happen. Don't make the... Mary already helped us to answer that question. How shall these things be? Luke chapter 1 and verse 34. Seeing that I know not a man. The angel already said it. Verse 35. This is always how it shall be. The angel answered. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Don't ask how will I be healed. That's the answer. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And the power of the highest shall overshadow you. How will I be delivered? The Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible talks about a man called Nehemiah. He was the cup bearer of the king. And one time the king loved him and saw his countenance. He was downcast. And the king said, I am not sure you are sick. But why are you downcast? And he began to cry and said that the, the wall of Jerusalem had not been built. And the king immediately said, so what do you want to a cup bearer? There are many of you today, right now, God has connected you to destiny helpers, but there are certain kinds that you need to meet. If you meet the kind that cannot help you, um, they will just comfort you. But there is one strategic person if nehemiah consulted with his contemporaries they would just console him but as soon as he consulted with the king all the materials were given to him plus letters to the governors don't harass this man i pray for you the grace that will connect you to those who will lift you instantly may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you
one of the the areas that the lord told me in the place of prayer is to break the siege of untimely death you see this thing called untimely death don't wait till it happens to you there is a wicked spirit that is able to cut men short beyond their time using flimsy physical occurrences a bike just comes to hit the only breadwinner in a family and he dies don't tell me that is the plan of god no i know the thoughts that i think towards you jeremiah 29 11 they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end are we together so in one minute i'd like you to pray please mention everything i know you wrote it down but I like you to pray because I'm about to begin to minister in the spirit. Father, I pray, let my faith be alive. Visit me in this area, in that area. Someone pray. Don't let the devil lie to you that God cannot do it. Even if it's a special miracle, that disease can leave you and the spirit can give way. Someone pray, someone pray. Outside, make sure you are praying. Don't be distracted. Someone pray. Tonight is my night. I place a demand on the power of God. For in Jesus name we pray now hear me there are tens of thousands of people here and you don't have to be called as an individual no let your faith reach by faith and you can receive right where you are and for the many who are following online just like the lady from austria said right where you are the concept of time and distance is a scientific concept but as far as the realm of the spirit is concerned i mean even even there are dimensions of science that have told us that at certain realms the the idea of time and distance it's is something that is inconsequential you can pick up your phone right now and with one dial you reach somebody in the north pole somebody at the other side of it and it will go with one dial did the Bible not say the word of God is quick? Quick. Hallelujah. Do you know, behind many situations, ladies and gentlemen, behind many situations are spirits. What do you think these demonic spirits do on earth? Have you ever asked yourself, what do they do on earth that means if you gather them now and said all unclean spirits what what do you do on earth already remember the story of Job. please sit down for one minute remember the story of Job. when he asked satan he said from whence comest thou he gave a very e e intelligent answer he says from going to and fro the earth not to and fro a region i'm going to start asking you to bring those under the anointing now i'm saying this to establish something because i want to rebuke this spirit to and fro the earth that means as far as satan is concerned the earth is too small there is no place he cannot cover 
and he does that by the agency of this spirit so they are everywhere what is their assignment everything that is pro god pro christ pro advancement pro love pro peace is their assignment apostle who did i trouble that this trouble is coming to me no that that is that is just a traditional way of thinking provided you are alive and provided there is potential in your life to reveal jesus you have invited satan into your life are we together jesus did not invite him to meet him in matthew chapter 4 he only was fasting and building capacity for the journey ahead and that act alone drew the attention of satan he patiently endured until the fasting was over the Bible says in John chapter 10 and verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. I always read it this way. The thief does not come until there is something to steal, until there is something to kill, and until there is something to destroy. That means when Satan comes to your life, more than being someone who will attack you, he has come as a verification system that there is something in your life, even if you do not know it satan will never come to that family if there is nothing to steal to kill and to destroy setting people free from the influence of spirits is like destroying a tree by uprooting it you're disconnecting it from the earth did you know that if you try to destroy a tree by plucking the leaves you're only wasting your time once it is still connected to the earth where it can draw nourishment and water it will spring back again in fact it can take what you are doing as pruning and grow back again is that true so there are many of us who are dealing with our situations you want to remove the, the devil look look at me please the devil walks like an octopus you know how an octopus is different hands he will touch your finances touch this one join the heads of others with the remaining hands and you will think there are many spirits it is one and the same operation visiting every aspect of your life so sometimes solving them one by one may be a waste of time that spirit that powers everything once you clear it out of the way the bible says all doors opened how many doors they didn't need all doors to be open to pass but all doors open the same way you came here probably saying apostle let's deal with this issue of my finance but now you will not know that the same spirit is still programming trouble in another area just because it has not manifested remember the book of job the discussion finished in the realm of the spirit then the bible says there was a certain day that was the day of execution same thing with haman they already prepared the day that they will annihilate the jews it just had not happened yet so just because it has not happened physically does not mean the programming has not been done the assignment of the anointing is to scan your life the challenges that have manifested and the ones that are still on their way it clears all of them are we together now you don't have to wait for them to manifest before you deal with them anything that gets to this realm has already been concluded in the realm of the spirit spirits for as long as i live i would not spare any demonic spirit that i know is responsible for frustrating the saints uh -uh. behind all these conditions there are many people what appears to you as infirmity is actually the spirit of poverty because by the time you are earning say fifty thousand or a hundred thousand and you are spending thirty percent of it treating a demonic malaria that never goes another month once you are done as soon as you collect your your salary it graduates to typhoid and then one kind of sickness that you don't understand as soon as the money is done the doctor says mysteriously it looks like you are getting better that is more than sickness it is a wicked spirit how about families where the devil will afflict one person and every other person in the family must suffer because of that affliction have you seen that kind of thing happen we are going to pray the devil is a liar in the name of Jesus Christ and then for those who have been trusting God this see 
this our friend who came and gave testimony the lawyer it really touched me time does not change anything it takes an encounter with the anointing of the holy spirit this gentleman would have remained like that and wondered how will it be eight years lord you've not helped me whereas he will be passing his destiny helper every day some of you your destiny helper is seated even close to you it's just that no destiny helper knows he's a destiny helper is prophecy that re, that that does that job because you are sitting down near a rich man or somebody who can connect you does not mean they will do that no it's the realm of the spirit that creates that reaction many of you are angry at every successful man wicked uncle you are seeing me every day that's exactly how it was designed to work naturally he should not have any burden he, he can't take any burden for your destiny except and unless when that grace for favor is on you now he turns to be more than an uncle he now becomes a helper when uh, saul was on his way looking for his father's donkey don't you think he must have passed a lot of people on the way none of them blessed him but when he encountered samuel and that grace came he said you will meet three people and all of them are holding two loaf of bread they will greet you and give it to you hallelujah God desires that our joy be complete. That's why he grants us the opportunity to experience miracles in our lives. He truly wants, listen, if there is anything I know about God, is that God is love. Find a, look beyond what has happened or not happened in your life. Find a way of convincing yourself that the God of the Bible is a loving God. Are we together? When you have that mindset that God is love, immediately, your heart is open to believe him and to receive the one who loves you is the one who heals you the one who loves you is the one who lifts you the one who loves you is the one who restores he does everything he does because he loves us more than just demonstrating that he's almighty is because of love if god did everything he did to us simply because he was a mighty god then we would charge him for lack of love i hope you know god's love is higher than his power is that true mm. god's power submits to his love it is his love that even regulates his power god does not exalt his power above his love for god so loved the world not for god was powerful that he gave not for god was mighty his might is there but let me draw your mind tonight to the love of jesus when you understand that he loves you you will not allow the devil lie to you and say well apostle is speaking about certain special people i'm sitting somewhere outside in the overflow i don't even know how to speak english well my cloth is not even anything to write home about that is exactly the kind of people that love even looks for hallelujah praise the name of the lord so beyond the shouting and the falling under the anointing beyond all of these things have it at the back of your mind that he loves you he loves you the message of god's love if understood will work wonders because there is something about not knowing and understanding the love of god that becomes the basis for accepting every nonsense the devil gives you are we together yes if you know that i love you then you can trust that there are some things I would not do. Is that true? The awareness of that love. If someone calls you and says, I am Joshua Selman, empty all your account into my, my um, uh, what now? Into my own account. That person is a fool and is a thief. Immediately you know that is a, that is a senseless, it's, it's an anti-Joshua Selman behavior. Are we together? So if, if, if you have that understanding, but if you suspect I do not love you, you can easily believe it. There are lies the devil has sold to us and we have believed it because the awareness of God's love. Do you know how far love can go? How far love can go? Power can go far, but not as far as love can go. Are we together? When power gets tired, it is even love that carries it along jesus was powerful 
but there was a time power failed on the way to the cross is that true he could not carry the cross the ministry of power failed it took love for him to finish believe me when i tell you it is good to be conscious of god's power but higher and greater than that is the awareness of the love of jesus love means he will not stop until it gets to you love means even if he tried to get it from january till july and it did not reach you power can get tired love insists until you become a reflection of that which he died for hallelujah praise the name of the lord most people do not love jesus they want his power but everything that has to do with love they are not interested in are we together for instance from the testimonies many of you when i came up here you were excited wow this powerful man of god is about to display power again and most of you have come to meet the unknown god unknown to you because you are not interested in relationship that is the character of spiritist and herbalist you've heard me say it when you meet a herbalist you don't say hello gentleman most of them are not really hello man they are not that gentle part is not really there are we together i'm joshua selman i'm tired of this situation help me they don't they don't care who are you turn back come in sit down what do you want i'm tired of this antagonism in my office okay let's ask the spirits and the spirits say we are hungry two chickens one cow they've even i don't know if inflation is happening with them too this <laughs> make sure it is black or brown or whatever color and that's it you live there not knowing the man not even knowing where you went you bring all the things and you drop it he would do all the incantations and say go it is done and most of them nothing happens they eat that that animal and they eat everything and say foolish people you think we're that stupid <laughs> hallelujah why do I know it doesn't work? Because both God and Satan is, is a similar pattern of spiritual growth and training. The same way somebody can be a weak man of God, you can be a weak herbalist too. Hallelujah. You can visit that man and never know his name. Never know whether he's, you don't care because the point of contact is your need not love but let me tell you how it works when you come to jesus when you come to him you are reaching for his hand he will gently hold your hand and use it to touch his heart and say listen it does not start with receiving miracles it starts with knowing me huh. you're a good good father that's who you are that's who you are that's who you are and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. I'm saying this because the best way to really receive miracles and to retain them is that they come on the basis of relationship. Not just a man of God speaking, as wonderful as that is. You know, there was a time that they worshipped in in the book of acts and they went to an unknown god i think to an unknown god you can come and just bow down to a deity who you think is called jesus because you hear that he can wipe your tears and he can make the gates of abuja open up for you but i want to start tonight with what i believe is the greatest miracle the greatest miracle is not sickness being healed oppression leaving doors opening favor coming more than that the greatest miracle is for you to be connected to the source of your life your joy your destiny that secures you both in this life and even thereafter and for some of you it is a reconnection because you remember being connected and because of the cares of life and all the hurdles or distractions you have completely lost touch with anything God you see, when we call people to come to Jesus, most people think it's just an evangelistic thing. If you really understand the implication 
of being outside of Jesus, you will know that calling people and reconnecting them is a miracle. Doesn't lead to shouting and falling and rolling under the anointing, but my goodness, if God were to open your eyes to see what happens in the realm of the spirit, the Bible says there is joy in heaven. Not many things make for joy in heaven like that. There is joy in heaven over one sinner. It takes a lot for a sinner to come to Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit must convict you. The power that is coming through the word thought must break that barrier. The law of sin and death replaced by the law of spirit, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And then you come to stand here or wherever it is. It is a real miracle for somebody who hates Jesus, hates church, hates any other thing or is just coming to receive and go back. And that person says no more than the car more than the house more than the clothes more than being healed from cancer more than being healed from whatever it is as much as i have seen people healed in all honesty i have seen others for some reason who were not healed as much as i've seen god do all kinds of miracles i have seen situations where those miracles did not seem to happen but there's one miracle that when it happens, you can beat your chest, knowing that it's a miracle that transcends beyond this realm. The miracle of an encounter with Jesus. If someone is not healed from sickness, and then he transits with Jesus in his heart, rejoice. It was not a loss. Because to be absent in the body is to be present, not on a journey. The Bible says to be present with the Lord. Are we together? I'm going to make an altar call. Don't stand yet. Just listen to me. Because there are people who will come out here forever without even understanding what we're saying. The moment they feel emotional, they just stand up and come. Just listen before you come. Do you know what leaving your seat to come and stand here means? Number one, it means I acknowledge that I was created and that the one who created me is greater and he loves me. Number two, I come out here as a sign of humility because I know that I am unable to help me, myself. If I have this life, there must be someone who designed that script. And it is wise to subscribe first to my relationship and then the template is created for me. For some of you, coming out here means I give up on trying to do things my way. My own wisdom has failed me. My own connection has failed me. I need Jesus. For some of you here, I am not ready to miss it out when this life is over. I don't just want to have a car and houses and lose my soul at the end of it. Are we together? So when we make that decision, it is important for you to know when you are coming out, don't come out and be chewing gum or playing with your ears while the altar call is going. You were not saved. It is not the coming out alone. The coming out is a good sign. But when you come here, don't pinch your friend. Your friend is coming for Jesus Christ. You to come and stand and pray the prayer. And that's why we ask people to come early because there are people who come and even amen they don't say you were not saved are we together now and then there are others who want to come out but they look at their friends and those who came with them and said listen i've written 13 14 15 prayer requests i didn't write any salvation thing so i'm here to be serious don't allow anybody stop you from receiving this miracle and you see the beautiful thing about the character of love is that love never forces when he comes to you he does not force you you must be <laughs> it is up to you to make up your mind and say jesus i believe in you we will not beat you we will not flog you we will not arrest you but listen to me for the sake of all who are connected to you for the sake of eternity for the sake of a meaningful life, Jesus calls you. I'm going to make this altar call now. There are thousands of people outside, many more in the overflow, right to the basement and even in this place and thousands others following by way of television, following by way of the internet. Jesus Christ is calling you and you came here tonight for this miracle service. Maybe it's your first time or you have been here you have watched others come you want to make jesus lord of your life genuinely i'm going to count one to five 
and i want those who are within this place around the balcony you want to make jesus lord of your life i want you to stand up boldly and come and stand here and all the overflows those who are around i want you to join them once this place is full please make use of your led screens right where you are no cajoling no telling lies don't sit down and allow anyone deceive you this is a serious this is not just about church this is you and jesus young and old please stand for space god bless you come and stand come to jesus god bless you thank you for being bold some of you are crying don't be ashamed he loves you two come to jesus if you're coming run so that you are all here they can move forward a bit gentlemen move back a bit so that they can come forward thank you apostle i want to come but i don't know if i'm i'm not sure if i'm saved god bless you join them there is such a thing as the assurance of salvation apostle i want to come but my friend is pinching me to sit back don't mind him please stand up and come in the name of jesus christ there's nothing to be ashamed of we're a family of faith and he calls you to give you a new beginning Oh, I love Jesus. When he opens that door, his arms are wide open to receive you and to give you a new beginning. I hope those outside are coming and then the overflows. You can walk to your LED screens. And for someone who may be watching from your home, you're watching from your office, you're watching by way of a rebroadcast, it is never too late to make it right with Jesus. You may be listening to this message probably in the night in the day in your room even having a retreat with it and the lord is saying let's start not just with the miracle of these blind eyes or whatever let us start with jesus hallelujah praise the name of the lord thank you very much for making this decision i truly appreciate every one of you young and old male and female alike it is a noble thing to come to jesus we are made today because of his grace upon our lives hallelujah may i please request that you lift your right hand all of you who have come out to make this decision lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to jesus and i want you to say this after me say it from the depth of your heart and mean it say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i need you i need you desperately i ask you to forgive my sins Please help him. We're still praying. I receive you into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. From tonight and forever, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I declare that I am a child of God eternal life is mine right now i go forward ever and backward never amen please keep your hands lifted father thank you so much for bringing these precious people thank you for the boldness and the courage that you gave them to make this noble decision some of them are crying spirit of the living god you are the only one who is able to help to build and to start a journey with them that makes for a meaningful life on earth and even life with Jesus afterwards. Therefore, I commend all of you to the word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you be grounded and established in righteousness. That from tonight, please help those under the anointing, from tonight until forever, I decree and declare, let it be a new season for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I'm going to round off for all of you, but there are three of you the power of God is coming upon you. I just saw a spirit leave you now. Let them go by their declaration of faith. Let it be over right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
let it be over forever the bible says for whosoever calls upon the name of the lord he shall be saved god bless you may i request that you please very quickly move to my right there are counselors they are ready to receive you they'll just receive you and have a word with you and then you join the service as we begin to pray god bless you god bless you koinonia let's celebrate them a big god bless you hallelujah holy holy are you lord god almighty worthy is the lamb worthy is the lamb you are holy holy are you lord god almighty worthy We're about to pray now. I want to start tonight praying for the sick. I don't want us to be constrained by time. Many people are suffering diseases and sicknesses. I'm going to pray deliverance and all of that. But I want to take the time to pray for the sick. Listen, I want you to know that the power of God to heal is real. Healing miracles are real. They are not stage managed. They are genuine healing miracles. And there are many of you here who have come having all kinds of conditions. Bone conditions, blood conditions. I've spoken about the power of Jesus. And then more than his power, his love, he is able to reach to you. And here's what will happen because I sense a very strong healing anointing now when I pray for the sick please um, those all the overflows outside I want you to listen attentively while I am praying I want you to release your faith to receive the moment I am done praying I want you to check yourself some of you even whilst the worship was going on you check yourself and you find out that a miracle happened to you something you could not do now you can do whether you are outside or any of the overflows or right here and even if you are following online please let us know through our PR lines and then through the media lines on our social media platform you can let us know that a miracle just happened from America Europe anywhere across Africa and even in Nigeria here Jesus is about to touch you so we'll do that very quickly and I'm going to give you an opportunity to come either to my left or to my right um, and then we're going to take a few of the testimonies and then I'll now begin to minister deliverance and to speak over your life hallelujah I'm already hearing the name Caleb who is Caleb Caleb you're wearing a black dress a hand the hand is black but the dress is there someone like that what's your name Caleb Where are you coming from? From Joss, sir. Joss, yes, I want sir. to pray for you. Your life is about to change. Do you believe that? I believe it, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, you call this gentleman to change his life. In the name of Jesus, Caleb, I pray for you. Let the power of the Holy Spirit rest upon you. Let it be a new season for you. Every limitation in your life, I declare, let him come. I declare that it is broken right now. In the name of Jesus, you're also Caleb, sir. Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Who is Veronica? Veronica. Veronica. I'm going to pray for the sick. Veronica. Let's let's just flow as, as the spirit. Ali Sabranduskiada. 
do you know you will think because you are operating in the power of god for a long time you will get used to it i am i am as blessed as everybody who watches this happen to because the power of god is a mystery the anointing is coming on one of you right now i just saw light and when that light comes it is light that dispels darkness and it will announce a new season even in your life that the, the captivity that which has held you down it's about to give way right now you deserve the glory and the honor we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor Shale bas kale branda gada da da We lift our hands in worship as we bless As we bless your holy name you are Majesty we bless you There is no Father, I pray for every one of these people. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Every captivity, everything that represents bondage by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let it give way right now. In the name of Jesus. For he called you. And in the name of Jesus, he calls you to give you rest. Find rest by the power of the Holy Spirit. I decree and declare the bondage be broken right now. In the name of Jesus, be broken right now. Be broken right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, be broken right now. I declare your freedom and your liberty. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.